are you single and if yes are you looking <laughs> wow 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 what a question well even if i was single i wouldn't be looking on youtube so i think that's an invalid question well guys welcome back to the channel recently i asked you guys to ask me questions about farming well i didn't say that but i imagine they would be about farming and lots of you guys ask the questions on youtube on instagram and on facebook so i'm going to try to answer as many of the questions as possible in today's video and um there are quite a number of questions so i'll make the responses as brief as possible and try to answer as many questions as possible i won't answer all of them but please stick around i might answer your question what has brought in more income chickens cows or goats well, starting off on this particular farm, the chickens haven't brought in any income yet because it's parent stock, they haven't started laying, so we haven't sold any chicks. Between the goats and cows, um, I would say it's the goats uh, compared to the cows. The cows, it's about the milk, but it's probably more also of a bias towards me and the price of milk in this particular region. I personally, if I had to choose one of the three, I would certainly never go cows because for some reason the milk is too cheap, there's too much input in terms of the grass eaten. So I would certainly say, God, I would like to know what really inspired you the most to venture into agriculture considering the fact that you are well educated and employed. Was it just passion you had for agriculture or you had something else? of someone that inspired you just like you've inspired most of us here well i wasn't inspired to go into farming i went into it for simply um financial reasons i just wanted a side hustle and that way i found out that i liked it i discovered the passion after i'd actually started why did you get the capital to invest in property chicks infrastructure etc well there's quite a different number of farms for me my original farm was built on my dad's land, so I didn't invest any money into the land. But I used my salary that I'd earned as a doctor to build the structure, buy the chickens, start the feeds, until I could make back some money. And when I did make some money, I then used the money to buy two acres of land. And recently, I'm in the process of acquiring two more acres of land to make it four acres of land. That way, I can actually expand that farm. This other particular farm, it's a partnership between me and someone, so there is input from two different parties so that's how i've managed to finance both funds what is the split of viewership between the different continents i think that means like the youtube channel well um it's not off my head right now i can imagine the us and kenya among the top two so i'm not really exactly sure what it is right now but i'll just put a screenshot of exactly what it is right now on the channel in my observation you've kind of neglected your personal farm do you think that that will affect its productivity? No, I actually haven't neglected it. It's because after I had an invasion of a disease and I sold off the birds, over the next two, three months, I have to clean it out. So we are doing disinfection and leaving it blank for some time. That way we can clear the disease before we bring in a new lot of birds. So it's all on my mind. I started a goat farm with Sokoto Reds. I don't know what breed that is, but I can imagine it's a goat breed. They are local in the northern part of Nigeria, but my farm is in the southern part with much rainfall. They are having difficulties coping, though being well fed, they look skinny. What can I do to fatten them up so that they look appealing? Well, if you're really sure that everything else is being done well, then the problem is in the genes and the genes being able to cope with that area. So the only idea I would give you is to probably change the breed or mix up your breed with the local breeds. That way they are better at coping with that environment or that weather. What challenges did you face as a first time farmer? Second, do you have a mentor in what you are doing? Challenges, the biggest challenge was knowledge. And number two, finances. But the knowledge, quite easy to get if you're invested into it, visiting farms, reading as much as you can off the internet. Sometimes you need to pay to get that information. The money, you just need to work hard. I did. I was working as a doctor. So that's how I got the money. Do I have a mentor? No. Actually, I don't have a mentor. Someone that I go to specifically to mentor me into farming? No, I don't. But I looked for as much information as possible. So there are people who I actually consult in the different areas of the farm. And then there are people who inspire me, people that I watch on YouTube, and they inspire me to push myself um, as much as possible. I want to know if we can raise both layers and broilers in the same farm. Yeah, it's possible, but it's not advised. So it's better that you separate the two structures, 30 meters apart, minimum distance. If you can do it in two completely different farms, perfect. But starting out, because usually money is the problem, you can raise them on the same farm, of course not in the same structure, not in the same house. Probably two different levels would be perfect, but they need to be separated. 
Sean Kaito is asking, would you vote for battery cage or depleter? I've actually made a video about that, so I'll just leave a link to that video right here. You'll find all the details. But in brief, depleter for me. I'll never go for battery cages. I've always wanted to ask you, how do you manage to prevent rain from entering the chicken run? Simple, just put a shed on either side of the structure. Make it at least one and a half, if possible, two meters. Then the rain will never come in. You can see over here, we really have, you know, a lot of space from the bottom to the top. The rain never comes in. If it's really windy, you'll have a few flashes and, you know, of moisture coming in, but it never gets wet because you just need to put a very good shed. Weren't you scared when you left medical school? And what were your parents' reactions? No, I wasn't scared. I would say I'd figured it out. I'd meditated and thought upon it for quite an amount of time and I was convinced in my heart of what I was going to do, so I was not scared. My parents' reactions, <laughs> my dad didn't give a damn. He was like, well, if you're going to make money, it's fine. My mom, I've never asked her. She found out somehow, but she has never told me about it, so life moves on that way. Are your sheep and goats on 100% grazing system or you occasionally buy solid foods to sustain them? Nope. 100% sustainable feeding around the farm. They just move around and eat grass, nothing else. We have 400 acres of land, so um, the goats and sheep are almost 500 in number. It's enough, way more than enough to sustain them, even in the driest of seasons. When are you gonna start rabbit farming? Well, I'm certainly not sure. I really want it to be as soon as possible, but because a lot is happening currently, we just can't put on something new to add on to it. So when the amount of work reduces just a little bit, we'll be able to do the rabbit. The thing with the rabbits is that I don't want to do them inside cages. That's what has really delayed it. And keeping them on a free range style, I know is quite complicated. So I'm just trying to figure out how exactly we can do this. If you have an idea of how to not keep rabbits inside cages, let me know. Please leave in the comment section below. How old are you? How did you get started with the farm? And did you start with chickens? 29. I started with chickens two and a half years ago, or maybe almost three years ago. Which phone do you use to film your videos? I used to use my phone. This is my phone. A Samsung Galaxy Note 10 Plus. From when I started the YouTube channel until April this year, um, it helped me grow up to 130,000 subscribers. So you guys can do it. But currently, I'm using a Canon M50. It's a mirrorless camera. Once you start hatching your layer chicks, will you supply to Kenya? I would love to buy some. Yeah, <laughs> when we do start hatching, of course, we're going to start with Uganda as we mobilize the resources and the paperwork that will enable us to supply to the other countries. Of course, we're going to start by supplying the nearest countries first. So Uganda, Kenya, Tanzania, Rwanda, South Sudan. Those are quite easy. DRC because they border Uganda. Then after that, we shall find or devise ways to even supply further as far as South Africa, or maybe even Europe or Asia, it doesn't really matter, but that's the goal. Get as big as possible while still controlling it. Which breed do you prefer as the best laying breed for commercial and as a backyard chicken? Well, I've only kept two breeds for commercial. One is the Issa Brown and the other is the Tetra SL. And I would certainly go with the Issa Brown over the Tetra SL. I know the people who have other breeds like the Lohman Brown and all the others. I think the Issa Brown is better than those. And for backyard chickens, that really varies depending on your location. Because they are indigenous chickens and... Uh, depending on the breed, it might be quite hard for you to keep them outside. So I would say the indigenous breeds for that area would be best. How large is your farm? Um, this particular farm, 400 acres. The other farm that I own, one is my dad's and it's about a third of an acre. And the other one is mine, which is two acres expanding to four acres uh, very soon. Why do your hens lose their feathers? Their backs are bare. That was an old flock. By the time you guys said seeing them, they had said getting old. When they were younger, they had their feathers. At some point, they were shedding their feathers due to changing seasons and the heat. So that's it. Do broilers also suffer from typhoid or it's only layers? Yeah, it's certainly possible, but the chances are lower because broilers are kept for a really short time, five to six weeks. So the chances of them getting full typhoid is low. It's possible though. For layers, the vaccination is compulsory because you're going to keep them for a really long time, you know, 70, 80, 90 weeks. How do you get rid of the chicken waste? Well, I never get rid of the chicken waste. Since we use deep litter, the chicken waste gets mixed with the litter and then at the end of the period we just get it out it will all be very nice manure put it inside the gardens or if someone needs to buy it we can sell it to them if we have excess where do you sell your indigenous chickens no we never sell our indigenous chickens we eat them 
But you can sell the indigenous chickens. My grandma uh, used to sell the indigenous chickens to people around. They would come and buy them from her. So they can be sold, but for us here, they are really for the farm consumption. They are not too many. I have my parents talk. So to avoid inbreeding, do I have to get new parents talk? Or after two years, I just need to get different cocks? Please help me. No. For parents talk, the thing is that after two years, the, the laying really decreases. Like, you're getting really, really few eggs. So you just need to dispose of the chickens, everyone, and get a new lot of chickens. They don't give you too much after two years. How many meters do I need to put between houses to avoid spreading of diseases? Standard, 30 meters between two chicken houses. What advice can you give to someone who is passionate about starting farming but is struggling to match requirements to start poultry farming, e.g. capital skills? Skills, quite easy to get. Go visit farmers, attend seminars, watch YouTube videos like this one, read books, sometimes you need to pay for classes. It's all okay. Getting skills is not as difficult. Capital, work. If you can get another job, get the money, you invest, and then start slowly Start small and keep expanding. Just do it as well as you can at the beginning so that you don't lose money. As you expand, you reinvest the money back. When to use antibiotics on layer chickens and which one is best? Does it not delay egg production? How to go organic free range? The idea is that you shouldn't be using antibiotics. Why would you use the antibiotics? You only use the antibiotics if the birds are sick and they need treatment. If they don't, you don't. You can probably give them vitamins as supplements, but no need for antibiotics. So, there is nothing like a best antibiotic. The antibiotic depends on the disease because different antibiotics treat particular diseases. Um, organic free range, it's quite complicated because it's very, very, very risky. But the idea is that you need to be as isolated from other birds as possible, from other farms as possible, and keep the very best biosecurity that you can. How do you keep farm records? I use Excel up until now. In the future, I'll probably use another system, but for now, it's Microsoft Excel. Are you open for farm visits? Plain answer right now, no. On this farm, I don't think we are ever going to do farm visits because the farm is too big and we have a lot of animals. The risk is just not worth it because most of you guys who would come to want and visit the farm probably either have animals or have had contact with other animals because your farmers just like me. That increases the risk for me of getting diseases onto the farm and if I ever get a disease, I'm doomed. All the money that you've put in, all this is gone. So I don't think it's worth it. But it's worth it on a smaller farm. So on my other farm, uh, which has a bit less animals, maybe a thousand or two thousand, I'm going to set up, you know, in the next few months, I'm setting up to ensure that I can get you guys to come over for trainings. Of course, it will be at a fee. Yeah, but you guys can come over for visits and trainings on the farm. Um, on that particular farm. So I let you guys know when I'm ready. Because the risk is smaller on that farm. It's certainly smaller. Is it true that rearing poultry and cows simultaneously on the same farm is a recipe for coccidiosis? I would say no. From how I know coccidiosis to spread, I would say no. But it's not a good idea because the two animals carry diseases and the diseases can be spread between one and the other. So it's certainly not wise. So if you can avoid it, you should. I'm certainly going to find ways of avoiding it. But for coccidiosis in particular, it comes from having wet litter or the birds being around a wet place. So if the birds are in direct contact with the wet place from the cattle, of course it is. But if they are not, no. I would wish to start a poultry farm, but my region is very dry. What advice can you give me? Well, it doesn't really matter. For poultry, it doesn't matter as long as you have the water. If you can sink a borehole, dig a well, find a way of getting water there, you're done. The problem is if the temperatures are so high. If the temperatures are so high, then you need to cool off the room. But our temperatures here are quite high. You know, they can get up to 33, 34 degrees Celsius. What you need to do is have very good ventilation, as you guys can see. We have really, really nice ventilation all the way up to the background. You can see how high this is, yeah? So the ventilation is really important, and you're done. Oh, and I almost forgot to update you guys about bingo. Guys, it's bad news, <laughs> not the best news, actually the worst news that you can get. Yesterday, woke up in the morning and went and found when Bingo had disappeared. She had grown up, we had tried to keep her, 
and she had started to grow up she really loved eating the bananas but we found when the wire mesh you guys do remember that we had built bingo's house simply using wire mesh it had been pulled away and i think she was taken by an animal i don't know which kind of animal it is it's certainly not a dog because it wouldn't climb the fence but there was no trace of bingo by any means so i think bingo was eaten and it's really disappointing really really disappointing yesterday was like the saddest day i've had on the farm so that was it guys that's how many questions i managed to answer i hope i answered most of your questions some of the questions i didn't answer because i've either answered them on the youtube channel before or they are too detailed for me to answer right here so i'll probably make a separate video for them if you think you benefited from the channel please don't forget to hit the subscribe button smash that notification bell that way you never miss out on an upload lots of love Catch you very soon with another video. Bye-bye.